Stupid people everywhere. Stupid people got stupid hair. Stupid people, they don't care cause they're stupid. Stupid people like stupid things. Stupid people wear stupid rings. Stupid people don't know anything cause they're stupid. Talk stupidly. Stupid people got stupid fleas. Stupid people are like a disease cause they're stupid. Stupid people wear stupid clothes. Hey everybody, Ben here from DMC Films and Cinderblock Studios. And today we're looking at creating zero point perspective. Now, a lot of times when learning perspective, you learn one point, two point, three point, some people even learn four point. And uh, while all of this is very good, one thing that you tends to be overlooked when being taught perspective is zero point perspective. And it has a few different names, but uh, we're just going to call it zero point uh, for the sake of this uh, demonstration here. And the thing with the zero point perspective is when you're looking at landscapes, which is you know most of what I do, uh, you're looking at something that doesn't always have a clear and focused vanishing point. I mean, you're going to see some things that may have, like a, you know, uh, you might see a, a road with, you know, say, like power lines or something coming up or so, and they're, you know, all in perspective going down the road. And there's, you know, the road with the lines going across. But generally speaking, uh, it's not a common thing in landscapes to be working in perspective. So what you're going to find is that you need to create depth without the use of a single vanishing point. We notice that in standard perspective, when you're looking at a uh, roughly a horizon line and you have a point on it, you're working, say, usually for blocky objects, oftentimes buildings. And you, you know, have your your lines, and the lines are pointing down, in towards that vanishing point. And usually, in single point perspective, you just have a line sort of parallel to the horizon, to create sort of that blocky image. The problem is, you, when you have a tree, or you know, some other kind of element, you have a tree that doesn't have these blocky elements to it. You have, you know, the the square edges, but a tree is just sort of its own element. It doesn't have these edges. So what do you do with it in in a landscape scenario? Granted, in single point perspective, you can kind of ha have these lines of your tree, and you can f kind of force yourself into doing it that way. But it oftentimes creates a a more limiting environment. So what exactly do I mean by a zero point perspective? A zero point perspective doesn't go to any particular point on the horizon. It just goes everything goes parallel to the horizon line. So we drop out another horizon line over here. And in doing a something like this, you might think, okay, well where's my point? The horizon is your entire point. So anything across the back is your smallest point. both on the top and on the bottom, they're the same size, roughly. And then as you get further away from this uh, center sort of horizon line slash vanishing, vanishing point, uh, things will start getting a little bigger. And then by the time they reach the edges, they are the biggest object in the scene. Now, in working with landscapes, you also want to make sure the things furthest away are also lighter in color. But granted, that's a tutorial for color and not for you know shape and size. So, how exactly would you apply this into a landscape scenario? Well, if we lay out another line down here, I'm just using this darker one right here, you'll notice that a lot of times, especially in my paintings, things will, everything works in layers. Especially working in acrylics, everything will work in layers. So, in the back, we'll have you know say a mountain range. 
that'll act as sort of our horizon, which isn't necessarily parallel, but you know, you get you get the idea. And then you'll have just elements of trees, say here, that are kind of cutting across and across the top. And then sort of in the middle of this, you'll have bigger trees. And then in the front, you'll have the biggest trees. They're stretching all the way across the top. They're hitting the top and the bottom, and here you're hit, they're hitting sort of in the middle ground, and here they're hitting uh, top and bottom, sort of, you know, just parallel on either side of that line. And from that, you have depth without uh, any direct perspective. It's just sort of as you're going back to the horizon, things are getting smaller. Now, in this, uh, this is a piece that I did uh, early in 2012, and this demonstrates my point uh, very, very well. I'm just going to grab a sort of a different color here. So a horizon in this piece is way up top and it's also slanted right there. So you're going to have these sort of jagged rocks. And you notice the way this piece is done, these rocks, larger, are closer to the viewer, not just further from the uh, vanishing point. This implies uh, slightly different effects. So you have the main sections of the rocks, which are, you know, f decent size, and as we're getting closer to the viewer, we're getting larger. But now, you have these rocks up here, that are sort of defying this parallel to the parallel line. And they're bigger here, than they are probably about here. These are about the same size. You've, so it kind of fools you into thinking, oh, these are the same size, they must be the same distance from me, th so these rocks are sort of falling. You also look at a rock down here that's you know, much larger, this structure, and it's about the same size as this one. Again, you see, these sides are closer. This rock must be closer. You're not actually painting them closer to the audience. It's just sort of a perception thing. Let's take a look at another piece. Now, you might remember seeing me do this piece in uh, a few hangouts, a couple of the live shows, and this illustrates the point even, lar in even better here. The horizon's roughly about here. So, with that element, things are getting bigger as they go further down. In here, you have very large elements. These are uh, complete, all these little dots are pine trees. And as you see, as you get closer to them, they're actually starting to fill out a little bit more. And here, as we're getting even closer, we have uh, small rocks, which, if you look at this rock, and you look at this mountain, they appear to be about the same size but you know that they're not the same size because of this is being closer to the viewer and this being much further away. Same thing with the clouds. You're looking at a smaller cloud here versus a larger one up here. You may think, oh, this is just a smaller cloud, this is just a larger cloud, but given the uh, concept of where the horizon line is, you're looking at a much larger structure. Let's look at one more example. Now this, if anyone happened to ask, this would be my favorite painting of all time. This painting is called Twilight in the Wilderness by Frederick, Ed Frederick Edwin Church. Now this particular piece is hanging in the Cleveland Museum of Art, and if you ever get a chance to go look at it, it is absolutely beautiful. It's actually very big, too. I didn't expect that uh, when I first saw the piece. So, we'll take a look at this example. The horizon is you know, roughly about here. Oh, whoops. I can't even get a straight line here. Okay. And that goes across from the top of those mountains and to where the, the sun is just, just peeking under the horizon there. And here we have elements getting larger as they go back. Let's draw out, let's draw this out in almost in one point perspective. Take a look at our lines. Take a look at the elements in the piece. You have trees that you can clearly see as, you know, pretty big pine trees, but these are much smaller than these. You can see them appearing in the piece. Like the same thing here, the clouds, way up here as they're reaching closer to the viewer, you can see them better. Yeah. And while this doesn't actually have direct one-point perspective, it has the illusion of perspective, given the pieces and the elements in the piece. There is some general vanishing point here, but generally speaking, there is just a general parallel line. Because if you look at, say, a mountain from here and a mountain from here, you know, they're 
This one is much closer, this one is much further away. It's much more subtle in this piece, but you still get that idea of perspective without any type of major flaw. Well, that about wraps it up. Hey, I'm Miral Joe, and I want to show you some basic principles of perspective that I use in everything that I paint, and that you could use in your next project. Now, perspective is just the way that things look from where you're looking. To understand it better, let me take you to the whiteboard and show you just how it works and why it exists in the first place. Your eye is round, and it receives light that comes from all angles, but only the light that comes in at an exact 90 degree angle makes it all the way to the sensor. So then the light coming from here is going to enter the eye down here where it's in 90 degree angle. It's not going to enter up here because that's not a 90 degree angle. It's going to bounce different directions. The light from up here is going to enter the eye right here and it's not going to enter down here because that's not a 90 degree angle. So everything has an exact place it enters. If I have an object that's right here, and it's taking up half of the field of view, you know, this is the rest of the field of view right here, then it's going to appear a certain size. But then if I move it twice as far away, same size object, look how much of the field of view it's taking up. It's taking up a quarter of it. One, two, three, four, right there. So you see, every time I get further away, the proportion that of the field of view that it takes up gets smaller and smaller. So things appear smaller as they get further away because that field of view is getting bigger and bigger as the distance increases. So if I hold up this marker about a foot away from the lens of the camera, you can see it takes up the whole field of view. But now if I move it twice as far, about two feet away, then you can see now it takes up about half of the field of view. So that I call the rule of halves and doubles, and I can use that information as I'm plotting out my mural. I'll show you how. So now I'm going to establish some distance markers using what I call the rule of halves and doubles. So at half of the distance to the horizon from the base of the picture, the distance is double what it was at the base. So if I make a mark right through the middle, I'm just going to draw a line right through the middle of this picture. Okay, now every time I cut the distance from any point to the horizon in half, the distance doubles. So I'm going to cut this distance in half. Distance to the horizon right in the middle now between my two times marker and my horizon marker. Make another middle line, okay, all the way across here. The distance here is now four times the distance at the base of the picture. Now if I cut this in half again, the distance is going to double again, and that's going to be the eight times distance marker. Okay, so now I've established all of these number markers, and you can see I ran out of space in here. That background is getting really scrunched, so I came over here and I just squeezed in a couple of little lines, 128 times, 256 times, it's so close to the horizon, it's hard to even tell the difference. So what this means is that at the two times line, the distance is two times my distance from the picture. So if I stand, now I'm going to get blurry for a minute, but if I stand way over here, then I'm about five feet away from this painting, then that means that this line would be a 10 foot line. It'd be 10 feet away from the view and I'd want to paint things appropriately in scale. But if I want to view this picture from close, then I want to paint this as though it's only double this distance, so only like two feet away. So you see, all this is a, is a proportion. It's not a specific number of feet. So in my picture, if I put an object at a certain size, then I just use the proportions to scale it down or scale it up according to these markers. By the time we get up to this line that says 64 times, that is 1 64th of the actual size. 
So I don't even know, 164th is, you know, I might have trees going up my hill too. So you can see that I am considering perspective in every single object that I put in a picture, but I normally wouldn't draw this all out like this in such detail, making a grid out of every single object. I'm just doing that so that I can show you what I'm thinking the whole time that I'm painting a picture. Just remember that rule of halves and doubles. That has been the most helpful information in my entire career about perspective. That is that half the size equals double the distance. Half the distance equals double the size. If you just remember that rule, you'll be amazed at what it can do for your paintings.